Why am I talking about a double whammy of COVID and measles? What in the world is going on and what does it mean for the future? As usual, I'm here to try and explain to you what the news reports in health are about and why it's happening in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nobody seems to want to talk about what in the world is going on because if they did say what was happening, it would cause too much inconvenient science. And so in effect, what I am talking about here, even though I haven't said it really, I will show it to you here. It is the elephant in the room. There's an elephant floating around. Nobody wants to talk about it. And it's causing all kinds of confusion. And I'll explain to you why I predicted this some months ago. So much so that I did a whole course on the measles storm to come. So let's pick up with what exactly is happening and why am I talking about this. So the first thing that you have to look at is this news report, BBC News here. And Canada is due to lose its measles-free status with the US on track to follow. And this was from the 10th of November, 2025. Following before that, in July of 2025, you had here another news report where Canada had become the center of a measles outbreak in North America. They linked it to a low vaccinated cohort of people in Alberta and Ontario, and this was the reason for it. But this is again the unvaccinated bashing. And I just want people to understand that, yes, measles vaccines are important, but I don't think that the unvaccinated are the cause of this outbreak. They are the visible reason that you're seeing it because they have symptoms. But I'll explain to you why this is so very important. The other news report was in October. More than 150 school children quarantined as U.S. hits 33-year high of measles. And so as usual, we're getting all kinds of odd thoughts. It's that this whole cohort of um, the population is now unvaccinated. There is vaccine hesitancy because of what happened in COVID. Nobody wants to acknowledge what happened in COVID as to why the population has suddenly become so vaccine hesitant. Nobody apologizes, nobody explains, and so therefore they are fueling this uncanny situation where the population no longer trusts medicine, science, or even vaccines. Instead of acknowledging what the problem was, is that you used, well, let me be careful here in case I get censored, but hopefully you get what I mean. Now, the other thing that people will blame is that there are lots of immigrants coming into all parts of the world. And so therefore, this is what they're doing. They're bringing measles with them and therefore causing all kinds of problems because they're unvaccinated. Again, that doesn't make any sense because if they were traveling and they got measles, measles is so contagious that, believe me, they would have had it before they arrived. So if they got measles in the U.S. or Canada, they got it there. The question is why? What in the world is going on? So that leads us to that principle of the double whammy. People forget COVID. They have no idea why in the world would I include COVID in this discussion. COVID is gone, isn't it? Well, here is the reality of where we are. Just again, showing you what the WHO said. Five days ago, 12th of November, there is global measles outbreak. So they are monitoring this across the world. And when you look carefully at what is happening, you then have to look at exactly the regions that are affected. I wonder if I can get this big enough to um, make you see what I am seeing. Um, uh, just give me one second here, 20 to 25, 2017, 2025, you know. Um, this is a slide, I hope you can see it, which shows, comes from the WHO, um, and uh, it is showing you here the global trend with regards to measles cases. Now, 
I'm going to try and see if I can make it bigger so that you can see it better. Um, and you will see what has been happening globally with regards to how measles has been spreading. And there have been a few peaks from 2020, but certainly there seems to be a problem here now um, with regards to what is happening in the region. So let's go back to the slide. I can't make it any bigger. So you can see here in 2020, this is where measles cases were globally. And in dark blue, it's Africa. In light blue, it's the Americas. EU is Europe, South Pacific. Uh, WPR, I think, is Oceania regions. This is central, um, uh, the central part, North Africa and the Middle East. And so you can see each one in different colors. And you can see these gradual surges. But if you notice 2020, then it comes down in 2021, not so high, starts to rise in 2022, continues to rise in 2023, peaks here in 2024. And in a sense, we are still having circulation of measles in 2025. This is what triggered me to look at what was going on. And if you look carefully at this, although there are more cases in Africa, it's about stable over the period of time. When we look at what is happening here in Central, in the Middle East and so on, that seems to be increasing. Europe had a massive surge here. And we can see that there is a rise in the Pacific as well. And as time goes by, Africa's numbers seem to be falling off again. But what we're seeing here is an appearance of light blue. And light blue means the Americas. This is where we're now having more and more measles cases occurring. So what you have to realize is that this is not just about the fact that people are unvaccinated because people were unvaccinated for probably over a decade. This is not something that happens suddenly. But the herd immunity seems to have shifted post-pandemic. That's the bit that I am interested in. So this is where we come to the science around what happened. And as I said, if you understand the science, you can extrapolate what is likely to happen next. And so when I looked at this in terms of the presentation that I did, it highlighted an important point about what I thought was going to happen and why. Here we have what happens with COVID, viral infection affecting the upper airway. If it breaks into the systemic circulation, it then causes all kinds of problems. But what happens with COVID is that it takes out some of your immunity. So you have the T cells, the B cells, the natural killer cells. All of this in terms of your immune team are depleted. So every single infection is going to rise. Viral infections, fungal infections, you know, bacterial infections, certain ones that are related to interferon. And so we will see this surge of infection like we have been seeing especially where the virus is circulating very highly and people get upset when I say that it is circulating highly in highly vaccinated regions. They say it is across the whole world. I don't think so. I think we know it's circulating in highly vaccinated regions and there should be an explanation for why that is happening. Here is where the problem comes because measles, as I said, is representative of that double whammy. I told you already that COVID wipes out some of the immune system, but there is no better virus to wipe out the immunity than measles. And so when you combine them together, this is the picture for what I said you get. Not only are your T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells removed, also, your monocytes, you're left only with neutrophils and mast cells. This is the recipe for disaster. So when we look at it, 
one of the points that I had made before was that it, they need to step aside from the narratives because the narrative now is that the measles unvaccinated are spreading measles. They're certainly being infected, but once you get it once, you have natural immunity and that's it for life. And so therefore, it was only it's only one infection. And so if you even had a cohort of low vaccinated region, measles sweep through, through it, that's the end of the measles, especially if you quarantine them. But this is not what we're seeing happening. Even when we have these measles cases, they are not because another unvaccinated person passed it on. So you can see that. But what we seem to be seeing is very broad measles cases across whole regions where they're not necessarily directly connected. And this raises the question that nobody wants to talk about. Subclinical measles circulation. And this is what I dealt with in that presentation because if the population's immunity has been depleted, and they are unable to fight off a measles virus in the normal way, they will then get infected subclinically. Because remember, you know someone has measles because of the rash. But because someone had partial immunity, they may not necessarily have a rash, or the rash may look different. And so you will not know that this was measles. That's where the mistake is. What they should be doing, and if this is purely about science and not interested in narratives and protecting interests, you would check everybody. Because what you would want to know is what percentage of the population who are already vaccinated are still potentially subclinically infected with measles and therefore circulating it. And what we may be seeing is not just the fact that more people are unvaccinated and getting measles, but there is a larger pool of subclinical measles infection where people think they just had a viral infection and they are fine, but actually it was measles. They circulated it to other people, but because they didn't have a rash, they didn't know to isolate. This is the kind of recipe for disaster. Because as I said, if measles continues to circulate with COVID, remember, it's not measles on its own. If both of them are circulating at the same time, you're going to get a situation like this. Absolutely depleted immune systems with immune memory white. An absolute recipe for disaster. And this is the concern I have, but in truth, nobody wants to look at this because it dangerous that we have today is no longer able to address complex issues and be open and honest about them. They, there is a fear of saying something like the um, people who have been vaccinated against measles can still circulate it. There is nothing to be afraid to say that because the measles vaccine works very well, but there is still a cohort who can circulate it subclinically. If you tell the population that, and it actually indicates you may need higher vaccine penetration to cope with the situation that is having with COVID. When you are unable to openly discuss the science, this only increases hesitancy and causes problems in the long run. So my prediction is that we are likely to see an outbreak of ongoing measles circulation, it is not going to stop, but following right behind it, especially if combined with COVID, is a raft of other illnesses, infections that don't seem to make sense and the population just gets sicker. Difficult times ahead. This in effect makes the perfect ground, breeding ground for an influenza spread with no immunity left across the population, there is nothing to stop 
other viruses from sweeping through. As usual, my advice, very simple, make sure you protect against viral infections. This is why we wrote Humming Heroes. If you hum along, it will protect your upper airways, make it more difficult for any virus to break through. It costs no money. It is something that is pleasurable to do. You can do it multiple times a day. All you have to do is get a free ebook. Actually, we want you to buy the full book, but the free ebook will give you enough information. Click on the link in the description. We look forward to sharing more science with you, keeping you updated on what's happening in the world. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure. Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon, check the links below.